Frederick Law Olmsted is the father of American landscape architecture. He did Central Park in New York, and he did the Washington Capitol grounds. He was totally taken by what was happening in Europe in the 1850s and 60s and thought that the United States needed to create parks for the people as well. He was quite taken that people of all classes met on very common ground in these European parks, and he thought that if you were going to have a great city in the United States, you should provide the same kind of amenities for city dwellers. The parks of the Emerald Necklace were designed by Frederick Law Olmsted. There are actually six parks in this system, Back Bay Fens, the Riverway Park, Olmsted Park, Jamaica Pond Park, the Arnold Arboretum, which is world-renowned as a research center and a living museum collection of plants and trees and shrubs, um, and last, Franklin Park, which is a park of over 500 acres and a park that Olmsted considered a, the crowning achievement of his country parks where he converted a sheep meadow into a, a lush, beautiful park, retaining woods. There's a woodlands of over 120 acres in Franklin Park. Those also are rare things to have in a city. You usually have to leave a city to actually be in the woods, and yet we have two woodlands right within our city. So the parks movement sort of grew out of cities becoming congested and dirty from industrialization. So the, the Emerald Necklace parks were designed to in fact provide a respite from the harried life of the Industrial Revolution. A lot of downtown Boston still has its original layout. The streets were laid out in such a way as to accommodate 18th century pedestrians, not cars. Um, which is actually ends up being a really good thing because we still, the pedestrians still own, own the area of Boston. Boston's, one of the nicknames is America's walking city. This used to be a giant elevated expressway that they called the uh, Central Artery, but it was anything but an artery. It really killed the city because it separated the waterfront and the North End, which is, you know, the historically Italian district and a really rich environment. All of that was cut off from downtown by this giant elevated expressway that made it really difficult for pedestrians to move back and forth. It was really an unfriendly environment. And frankly, it wasn't that efficient for cars either. It was notorious for horrible traffic jams, hard to get on and off. I'm sure many people have heard of The Big Dig. It's been our ongoing extensive project for years and years and years to tear down that massive central artery that cut, literally cut Boston down the middle. So what they did was take the highway that was elevated and put it underground. Um, no small engineering feat, obviously. They um, created a tunnel that went under Fort Point channels. After billions of dollars, many years, unfortunately, you know, a couple of lives, we've managed to, to disassemble that. And now we have a long, uh, three mile long park called the Greenway. The Greenway is kind of a, a prime example of turning a space that was designated only for traffic to a space that's designated only for pedestrians. What we've gained in this whole process is that the fabric of Boston has been reunited. The Rose Kennedy Greenway is, is Boston's newest park, and I think the reason that the necklace concept came up is he originally thought that there should be an entire necklace, an entire park system that would circle Boston. And so we're getting closer to having that. So we're standing on the Greenway, and you know, you'll see it's not all green. Obviously, there are green patches, there's grass, there's uh, plantings, there's trees, you see a lot of benches, you see artistic uh, installations, um, you'll see fountains. There's a real breadth, and, and that's, I think, one of the things that the beauty of this. It's interesting because I think we're not even sure yet what was going to happen here. I think you're going to see people come up with other ideas for this space. I think you're going to see public performances, uh, lots of activity out here. Um, that's going to happen sort of organically, and I think that's the beauty of it. Once you get people out walking again, they figure out what they want, and they call upon it and create it themselves. And, and that's absolutely what's going to happen with this corridor up and down through Boston. We're out saying, let's build places where they'll go out. And they, people ask, but does that work? And the short answer is yes, it does, actually. This amount of parkland that stretches seven miles through the city uh, provides corridors in which walking is safe.
Isn't it interesting that we were concerned about providing a respite for, for city workers from their factory lives in the 1870s, and I would argue 140 years later, we need to provide a respite from our lives behind computer screens and at terminals. Um, most people today have sit-down jobs, and so having the respite to get outside and exercise and get fresh air is equally important today as it was 140 years ago. So the parks play virtually the same kind of role for people as a, as a respite from harried city life.